Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to be sharing with you all the puzzles that are completed for the month of December. So we've got some from Instagram, some from videos, uh, there's probably some that I just felt like doing as well, we'll, we'll see. But there's definitely quite a festive and floral kind of mix of themes going on here, so that'll be fun to check out. And if there's any uh, puzzles in this video that you want to know more about, definitely check out the description box below because I will be listing them all there. And uh, yes, this video is a little bit late to be coming out. I was hoping to get this one out and also the December haul last month, but life has just been <laughs> chaotic and crazy busy. Uh, but I think things are finally starting to get back under control. Uh, we'll see, I guess. But either way, I hope you enjoy this video and let's go through all the puzzles I did for December. So we don't have too many puzzles here to go through for the month of December and I've just grouped them based according to brands. So let's go through them. So this first one is by the New Zealand brand Peace House and it's called Flourish and this is actually the second one I've done by them and uh, it's 1000 pieces um, and all their artwork is done by New Zealand based artists which I think is really cool so this one says artwork by Laura Shawcross and I just think this one was really pretty um, I just yeah this sort of beautiful kind of mix of like bold line work um, and then like lots of delicate shading light dark little tech like I guess textual patterns yeah so it's like there's a lot of detail, but it's still quite a bold image. So yeah, I really like that sort of combination. Um, yeah, it's just all these beautiful flowers and these sort of vintage looking, some <laughs> vintage looking vases on this sort of marble countertop. And some of the vases look a bit kitsch, like we've got this sort of kitschy swan kind of ceramic vase where, you know, something someone's grandma might have or something from the fifties, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, the flowers are really beautiful. But then uh, there's this sort of kind of contrast of you know, petals and flowers wilting and falling onto the countertop. So this sort of, I guess, life and death kind of theme going on here. Um, yeah, and there's also beautiful little insects sort of thrown in. We've got a butterfly, I guess like a wasp or a bee and a little beetle. Oh, and like another little moth. But yeah, really enjoyed this one. Um, so the quality is really nice. I'm going to put this down because it's actually really heavy. <laughs> um, so if any of you have done uh, some of the recent Minty Fizz puzzles um, and you like that sort of really thick, nice quality, this is really similar. So you'd probably enjoy this as well. Um, and I think that's why it's so heavy because the pieces are like chunky and like thick. And yeah, so the pieces are have a nice like sort of bluey gray board backing. They're really nice and thick, like they feel really good to handle. Um, what else? The top is quite matte. It's sort of got a very subtle like linen, texture finish on the top and yeah like not much sheen or glare at all so yeah very matte i don't think there was much dust at all um and as for the fit so the pieces are all like a grid cut so there's like a variety of different shapes and i don't think there were really any false fits at all or very few so they fit together very nicely um, but it is more of a looser fit so you can't really do a puzzle pickup um, but that's okay it's not why I do puzzles, um, but it is, is always a fun bonus thing you can do if, if the fit is tight enough. But yeah, so it's more of a looser fit. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a really nice quality. Um, and like I said, it's the second one I've done from them and I would happily do more, and I, which is good because I do have a couple more in my collection. But yeah, beautiful artwork and very nice quality. Yeah, definitely would do more of these ones. And then next we've got a couple here from the Australian brand Tanya Wicks Photography. Um, so this first one I did over on, well actually I did the lot, a lot of these on Instagram. So the last one and this one as well. So this one is by her, uh, part of her collection Joy and Pieces, which is the most recent collection. And this one's called Spring Serenity and it's 1000 pieces. Um, and yeah, so Tanya Wicks is based in Queensland, Australia. So yeah, lovely Australian brand. And yeah, this is just all her puzzles are taken from her own photography. So she's just a really talented photographer and always like takes the most stunning photos of all different subject matters, but definitely captures flowers beautifully. Um, yeah, this is just like the name suggests, Spring Serenity, beautiful, like bright and cheerful, colorful, uh, I guess spring themed flowers. Yeah, like lots of poppies and I don't know, I'm not good at knowing flower varieties. Um, and the image that you see 
on the box is only part of the image. Um, they do, there is like a poster in like a pretty good sized poster on the inside, which has the full image. So that's good. And um, I forgot to mention actually the previous piece house puzzle. There's no poster, um, but you do have like a full image on the front and the back. Um, but the pieces come in a lovely zipper canvas bag. So that was nice. And in this one, the pieces come in a resealable Ziploc bag. So also very awesome. Always like that sort of uh, like reusability of things and just saving on like waste. So that's great. Um, but yeah, the pieces in this are like really nice, very nice quality. Um, and yeah, beautiful image, like a <laughs> getting sidetracked. Beautiful image, love the artwork. This is very, yeah, made me very happy and cheerful and yeah, beautiful spring puzzle or any time of the year. Good for a gloomy day too, to brighten it up. Um, but yeah, back to the quality. Yeah, the pieces have a, they're, they're kind of like a, I guess a medium sort of thickness and they have a nice sort of brown cardboard backing. Um, I can't remember because it was a while ago, but they're quite smooth on top. Um, yeah, so they're, yeah, they're quite smooth on top. I don't think they have a texture. Let me just check. Um, no, they don't really seem to have any texture. Not like the last one that's like a linen finish. This is very smooth. There is a little bit of sheen and not glossy, but there's a little bit of sheen. Um, but yeah, this is also like a grid cut, but the pieces are kind of like kind of interesting quirky shapes, but they are still sort of the standard, you know, uh, two tab, three tab, four tab, that sort of thing shaped pieces, but they're a little bit like skewed and wonky, which makes them interesting, but it's still like a grid cut. Um, but yeah, they fit together really nice. I don't think I had a single false fit in this, which is to me pretty impressive considering, you know, you're dealing, especially in this image, you're dealing with like a lot of uh, petals and very similar looking bits and pieces, especially like all these, you know, white and purple petals. So yeah, not a single false fit. Also very little dust. Um, and yeah, the, I think from memory, the pieces hold together reason, reasonably well. Like you can pick up sections or like small sections pretty easily. Um, and yeah, I think you can, I don't think I did try it, but I think you can do puzzle pickups with her puzzles. So that's fun, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about this one. Loved it. And uh, yeah, definitely glad this one's in my collection. And then uh, this one here is another one by Tanya Weeks Photography. So I actually did a video on this one um, where I sort of did a sort of, I guess, brief overview of like her latest collection. And then this is the puzzle I did in the video. So I'll link that in the cards above for you to check out if you're interested. Um, so this puzzle is also from the Joy and Pieces collection, 1000 pieces and it's called Envelopes, which is pretty straightforward. But yeah, I just thought this was a really fun one. Like again, this is not the whole image, it's on the post on the inside. And just like the other one, it can't, the pieces come in a resealable Ziploc bag and yeah, and, and all the same great quality and features as the previous Tiny Mix puzzle. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It's, you know, it appeals to someone like me who loves colors and rainbows and stuff, but I kind of liked the interesting take on it that it's made up of all these little envelopes. And also it's not like a classic rainbow. It's kind of a more mature subdued rainbow. Like there's a lot more, like it, th there are bright pops of color, like this sort of teal and purple and orange and yellow, but then you've got these sort of more muted browns and cream colors and these sort of more muted greens as well. But yeah, I thought it was really lovely. It was also really fun and quick to put together. So even though it's 1000 pieces, I found it quite easy to do and just really relaxing. And it's the sort of thing you could like put together by yourself or with friends or family in an afternoon. So yeah, really good fun and just, yeah, really enjoyable. So yeah, love that one. And then actually before I talk about this one, I'll talk about an invisible puzzle, which is by the same brand as this one. Um, so kind of imagine this box, but with a different image. Um, so it's by an Australian brand called Bespoke Letterpress who do like stationery and homewares, but they do beautiful puzzles as well. Um, so I don't have it here because it was lent to me by a friend and I've since returned it. Um, but it was, I believe it was called Nutcracker or Nutcrackers. And it was this beautiful, like festive Christmas inspired uh, illustrated puzzle. And there will definitely be an image up here somewhere. So don't worry, you'll have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, there were just all these lovely uh, painted or illustrated nutcracker dolls or nutcrackers. And there were like some ballerinas or little dancers, some fairies. 
Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Uh, there were like lots of cute little flowers and plants, like the red and white polka dots sort of toadstools on mushrooms, little gnomes. Uh, oh, that's right. There was like uh, little fruits, like strawberries, lemons, that sort of thing. Like, so yeah, it was a really kind of like this one. You can probably tell quite a busy patterned image. So that's what that one was like as well. But yeah, really gorgeous. Uh, so beautiful. So glad I could borrow it from my friend for Christmas. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, they always have gorgeous uh, patterns and like puzzle images. And then as for the quality on these, um, so it does have white paper backing, which isn't my favorite, but they actually seem to be pretty quality, seem to be pretty good quality in these puzzles. Um, and they tend to be a, I guess, kind of thin to medium or medium thickness pieces. Um, the tops like quite smooth and I guess kind of hard. Um, there's like a bit of sheen, not he like it's not overly glossy, but there usually is like a little bit of shine to these. Um, and uh, I guess something good though, definitely no puzzle dust, which is great. And I'm just trying to remember what else. Um, they do come with a poster. Also, let me, let me bust open this one. <laughs> I just can't remember, does it come in a Ziploc bag? No, I had to use my own, but yeah, it does come with a poster. Um, and oh, the fit, like they are grid cut and there weren't any false fits, but it is more of a loose fit. So again, you wouldn't be doing a puzzle pickup, I don't think, um, but, but that's okay. I mean, I guess the only main thing is it's harder to pick up sections. So if you're working on something, you might have to work on it a bit more strategically. Like you can't just lift it up and move it. It's gonna crumble. So you might have to uh, build things in the spot that they're gonna go, that sort of thing, or, or have a scooper or something like that, like a bit of paper or cardboard you can lift the section up with and then move it. Um, so just something to keep in mind with the, those puzzles. Um, yeah, so I really love that one and it was just a beautiful festive Christmas puzzle. And then next is the other one from that brand, Bespoke Letterpress. So uh, again, gorgeous image. Um, yeah, this one's beautiful. So this one is called Christmas Ornament or Ornaments. Um, that's something actually about this brand is, so nowhere on here, is like they've got the full image on the back yeah so the front is not the full image but the full image is on the back and then even though they do have like a bit of blurb here saying 1000 pieces and that sort of thing do you think they would have the name of the puzzle anywhere no no they don't the only time they have the name of the puzzle is when it's still shrink wrapped and it has like the barcode on it and then it says the name so yeah you have to kind of remember what it's called um, so i'm pretty sure this one's christmas ornament 1000 pieces but yes yeah, stunning um image yeah just this beautiful super detailed floral festive <laughs> christmas puzzle so they're all like christmas baubles or christmas ornaments as the name suggests but each one has all these lovely flowers and little leaves and like berries and things in them um and yeah and there was even like some cute tropical ones like this one has hibiscus so i thought that was cool since i'm in australia it's a nice tropical summer here for christmas so yeah that's kind of suitable but yeah, really beautiful. Um, but even in between all the baubles and the background, it's so like jam packed with details, like little stars, more like flowers and plants and berries and what looks like little snowflakes. Yeah, it's really, really pretty and like super detailed. So yeah, I really love this image. And I forgot to say actually, both this image and the um, Nutcrackers one, they were both, both kind of tricky actually, just cause there is so much detail and like so many little background bits and pieces going on but definitely well worth it because they're just so beautiful and yeah this one has all the same uh i guess positive and negative qualities as the other one yeah they're pretty much exactly the same so but i mean yeah overall i still even though i don't love paper backing um it's like done pretty well in these puzzles i've never really had much damage or yeah i haven't really seen any bad quality in these so yeah, despite that, I still really enjoy the experience. And I guess my only thing is like, I didn't love the loose fit, but that seems to happen. I don't know, it happens in lots of puzzles. So it's just something you put up with, especially for like a beautiful image. So yeah, I really loved it and glad to have it in my collection and especially part of my Christmas festive collection as well. And then, oh, what do we do next? Um, let's do this one. So we've got a Ravensburger one here. So this is a lovely spring themed one as well. It's called Cherry Blossom Time and it's 1000 pieces. And yeah, I've had this one in my collection for a while. Who's it by? Um, Veronique Audien? Hopefully I said that right. 
but I just thought this is so beautiful and really appeals to me because I love Japan and I've always wanted to go to Japan during their spring to see the cherry blossoms. It's on the bucket list, maybe next year, we'll see. Um, but yeah, it just reminds me of that and it's just such a beautifully like illustrated or I think painted image. So we've got, uh, all, of course, all these beautiful pink cherry blossoms blooming. So, so it's very cheerful and just bright and happy and just really pretty. And then we've got all these sort of uh, Asian style lanterns with like tassels and even those are like nice and bright orange and this green and this pink one with little flowers like drawn on it as well. And then we have these lovely birds and butterflies. So I don't know what type of birds they are, but they're just gorgeous and they've got red and greeny and blue kind of like feathers and these butterflies are lovely and like sort of emerald green. Yeah, there's just a lot going on and it's very pretty. This was a bit of a tricky one to put together as well, especially um, all these branches and feathers and things, but definitely worth it as well. Just, yeah, a gorgeous image. Um, and yeah, this was just classic Ravensburger quality. So your lovely blue board backing, lots of puzzle dust as usual. Um, no resealable bag. I can't remember if there was a poster. There might've been a poster in this one. I'm not sure, but the image on the front is big enough anyway. Um, and pieces fit together nicely, grid cut. Um, I always feel like though it's hard to say with Ravensburger whether they're a f like a loose fit or a tight fit because I feel like it kind of is a little inconsistent sometimes like I've had some Raven Ravensburger puzzles that where you could do like a puzzle pickup and, and others that seem a bit more loose and I honestly can't remember what this one was um, I feel like I was able to pick up some small sections gently so I, like I sort of have a memory of that but I'm not too sure um, but either way, the fit in general is very nice. And then the other thing with like uh, the Ravensburger pieces that I find, which I've heard a few other people sort of talk about as well, is they never seem to have quite a really, that's my cat asking for afternoon tea. We'll be done soon. Um, they never seem to have a really like completely flat flush top. I always find them to be a little bit sort of puffy or wavy. So, I mean, I personally don't mind it at all. It's just something to note, I guess. Um, and I've heard other people say that too. So, whereas like, I don't know, like <laughs> lots of these other puzzles I've been talking about have had a very flat finish when you've put the whole puzzle together, but this is a little bit, yeah, the pieces almost have like a puffiness to them. Um, but I'm not saying that's good, bad. Otherwise I, I personally don't mind at all. Um, but yeah, I just thought, yeah, really enjoyed it. I'm quite happy with the Ravensburger quality minus the dust, but I can live with that because they do always have gorgeous designs to choose from. and. A whole range of artists and yeah I really love this one and this one is definitely staying in my collection for quite some time I think and then we have a few more to go through um, we've got a very uh, festive Christmassy kind of garish one here from Clementoni so this one is called well it's called impossible puzzle classic Christmas collection and then I believe it's actually called jolly Christmas um, so it's very uh, in your face detailed filled with Christmas ornaments and bits and pieces, very garish and kitsch, um, shiny, <laughs> glittery. Yeah, it's like, it's full on. Um, definitely wasn't impossible because I was able to complete it. Um, but yeah, it's just got all these like shiny, glittery, metallic Christmas ornaments. You got bells, um, I don't know, like pine cones, little nutcrackers, gingerbread people, um, like just patterned baubles uh what else like that's my cat again um little soldier i don't know yeah all sorts of stuff and then they've even added like just to make the image a bit busier although actually i found this kind of helpful they've added their own little kind of colorful snowflake design border across the top and the bottom so i actually found that more easy to put together because you could like i mean obviously it just made the border easier but then uh the snowflake if it went on to certain parts of the puzzle you could easily figure out where that bit went so it wasn't too hard I mean it was a little bit challenging but and a little bit time consuming but definitely it wasn't like super frustrating or hard to do definitely doable um, but yeah quite fun and festive and yeah just a great colorful cheery Christmas puzzle so definitely enjoyed that one um, yeah but as for the quality of Clementoni I'm always a bit uh, like in two minds about it 
I mean, I kind of put up with it because I do like a lot of their images. So they have like a gray board backing, which is great. Um, and like a you know, kind of classic grid cut, all the different tab like pieces, like, you know, two tabs, three tabs, four tabs, that kind of thing. So kind of very, you know, standard grid cut pieces. Um, and then they usually like a medium, this one was like medium thickness. And then the top of the pieces, although it has like a linen textured finish, they're kind of glossy, which is kind of weird because you often associate that light linen texture with more of a matte finish. But I guess it's a bit like this box. This box has a bit of a subtle, you won't be able to see it on camera, but um, you might be able to see it um, when I like pan this show, this puzzle being panned, you might be able to see on the pieces. But anyway, it, yeah, it has like a, a bit of a texture to it, but it is more on the glossy, shiny side. So that's kind of weird. And then um, I can't remember, if, ugh, I'm tongue tied. I can't remember if there was dust. I think there is always a bit of dust with Clementoni, not as much as Ravensburger, but a little bit. And then the one thing that I guess was a bit of a negative with this one is a lot of the pieces weren't completely cut through uh, to the cardboard on the back. So some were still a bit like stuck. And so you either had to rip them apart, leave them apart, or I guess get like a knife or scalpel and kind of like cut them through a bit because yeah, there were quite a few like stuck together. So yeah, I've seen that a bit with their puzzles before. And I think even like some other, it happens, but I guess it just means like uh, for whatever reason, their die cut when they're cutting the puzzle doesn't is either maybe it's a bit blunt or something, or it doesn't go all the way through to the very final layer of like paper or cardboard on the back. So yeah, a bit frustrating, but you know, but it was a pretty inexpensive. I feel like it was a pretty inexpensive puzzle, and Clementoni's pu Clementoni puzzles, oh, very tongue tied, are quite at least in here in Australia inexpensive, and they're quite easy to get. So. Uh, but you know, it's always nice when you you don't have to separate the puzzle pieces like that. But yeah, so it is what it is. But overall, still had fun with it and glad to have it in my Christmas collection. And then I guess we'll do this one, uh, another beautiful spring one. So this one is by the brand Scandinavian Presents and they're actually based in Sweden, I believe. And this is uh, by the artist Dora. Um, and it's called Spring Entanglement and it's 1000 pieces. And I think it's just beautiful, has beautiful packaging, like comes in this lovely little uh, magnetic sort of closure box. And I guess, as you can see, it's got like little details here as well of like taken from the image and come, the pieces come in this lovely, very thick kind of canvas zipper bag. There's also a little poster, but it's so like, it's the size of the box, so I'm kind of like, What's the point of that? I get. I mean, I guess because the full image is kind of covered by text on the front, but still, I'm like, a bigger poster would have been nicer. But anyway, oh, now I can't close this. Oh no. Also, the box is lovely, but it is a bit on the small side, so I did actually have to pour the pieces into like a different box to try and like sort them and stuff. So, um, but anyway, love the packaging. It is beautiful, but yes, a bit. You know, there's a few things, few negatives about it. Nothing like major, just, you know, be nice to have a bigger poster. Box isn't that great for sorting, that kind of thing. Kind of thing. But yeah, it's really beautiful and they have info about the artist and just lovely. Anyway, enough about the box. The image itself is just really stunning. Um, so, it's, you know, I guess it's this sort of beautiful woman or maybe she's like a goddess, like mother nature, that sort of thing. Um, and she's just in amongst all these flowers, like you got roses and like sunflowers and poppies and like other little sprigs of, you know, very spring summery flowers. And then, yeah, there's beautiful like little ladybird and butterflies and some bees. Yeah, it's just very, very pretty. Um, yeah, just really stunning. I just love the artwork. And again, a bit like uh, that puzzle flourish from the New Zealand brand. It sort of almost has like these bold lines or bold outlines, like a bit like a graphic novel style or like comic style, but then has a lot of like detail shaded into like the different elements and like playing with like a lot of light and dark and also like a lot of kind of pattern textures and things like that. So yeah, like it's sort of a combo of being bold, but then still having a lot of detail and still being very pretty and using very soft colors. But yeah, really liked it. Um, so yeah, back to the quality. Um, this is really similar actually to the bespoke letterpress 
Oh my goodness, my cat. Um, this is really similar to the bespoke letterpress puzzles. Um, whereas, yeah, the pieces have like a white paper backing. They're kind of like a, maybe a thin to medium thickness, smooth on top, not overly glossy, but a little bit of sheen. Um, there wasn't really any dust, I don't think. What else? Um, and yeah, the pieces, like they're kind of grid cut and with all your sort of standard shapes and stuff. And they do fit together quite well. I don't think there were any false fits in this one or very few. Um, but again, it's more on the loose side, so I don't think you really could do a puzzle pickup. Um, I think I was able to very gently move some sections around, but it was a bit hit and miss. And I think that's sort of the same with the bespoke letterpress. They're not, yeah, they're just, it's not a tight fit. But, you know, that's okay. You just find strategies to deal with it. Um, and, you know, I can put up with that sort of issue because the image is so gorgeous. So, yeah, and it's just the nature of puzzles. You're not, not all puzzles are going to have the fit that you want. And some people prefer a looser fit than a tighter fit and all that. So it's always a bit variable and everyone has different tastes and things like that. But anyway, yeah, gorgeous image. And yeah, this is my first time trying this brand. And um, yeah, I, I really liked it. So yeah, I think they have beautiful puzzles. Like they've got another puzzle called, I think, Greenery City, which I've got uh, waiting for me to do. And yeah, that's really by a different artists, but also really beautiful and just a really cute image. So definitely looking forward to doing that one sometime as well. And then we're down to our last three, which are all from the brand Wentworth. So, um, so this first one I actually did a video on, which I will link up here. It was my Christmas puzzle video and also kind of a challenge puzzle video. Um, so this puzzle is called the puzzle that will wind you up and it's class is extra difficult and it's 252 pieces. And the reason why it's a challenge puzzle or extra difficult, even though it's only a small piece count is because it's this sort of crazy, very colorful, very detailed and jam packed image of all these cuckoo clocks and little, yeah, all little Christmas themed, festive themed cuckoo clocks in bright colors with little like Santas and reindeers and snow and presents and what else? I don't know. Lots of, just lots of Christmassy themed things. Um, but yeah, they're really cute. But yeah, the thing that makes it difficult is like they're all overlaid, but there's like repeated, the cuckoo clocks are repeated throughout, but it's not exactly a repeating pattern. It just has repeating elements. Um, so you might have like a yellow clock here, but surrounding it will be different sort of cuckoo clocks than the yellow clock over here. So it's quite tricky. And I actually did, that did trip me up quite a bit. Like there was a lot of pieces that looked really similar because um, the details are so tiny in this. Um, and so I like definitely, I guess, they're, would you call them false fits in a challenge puzzle? I don't know. Like I definitely had pieces in the wrong place a lot of times. And I think that's part of why it's a challenge puzzle because it's like very similar looking pieces, but they're not the same. And then you suddenly realize why can't I find the next few pieces in this area? Oh, because this one's wrong. And then you have to like take that out and rearrange things and that sort of thing. And then the other thing that's interesting about this puzzle, well, a couple things. One, it doesn't have a flush straight edge. The edge is sort of got little cutout bits. And that's partly just because all the shapes in, in this wooden puzzle are like, uh, they, they only have like a handful of different shapes, but they're repeated. So they're sort of like geometric abstract shapes. Although a couple of them form together to make a little cuckoo clock shape, which is really cute. Um, so yeah, like they tend to repeat. So that also makes it more tricky. Whereas like a normal wooden puzzle would have uh, like whimsy pieces. So they would all be fairly unique and then irregular shape pieces, which again would be all quite different. And usually the image isn't as bonkers as this one. Um, but yeah, it was good fun. I did enjoy it. It was a little frustrating at times, especially when I kept putting things in the wrong spot, but I got there in the end and yeah, it was just really good fun. And I could definitely see myself doing this again, like next Christmas or Christmas in July. It's just a fun challenge. Um, yeah, really, yeah, really good fun. And then ooh, we'll do this one. Um, so this one is a really gorgeous Christmas image from Wentworth as well. It's called Nutcracker and it's 250 pieces. Um, and this is more your normal type of wooden puzzle where it's got uh, themed whimsy pieces and then like irregular shaped pieces that sort of fit around it. And this one does have like a straight edge, doesn't have any cutout bits. But yeah, really lovely image. I love the rich colors of the Nutcracker's outfit. And, and then it's just got all these cute toys, like I guess like 
maybe what's on a what child what a child would ask santa for christmas it's got like a xylophone teddy bears like ballerina dolls some jigsaw puzzles of course um like a doll's house yeah like lots of cute things a robot um and then there's these giant candy canes and even in the background there's like all this beautiful sort of like like you know old-fashioned wallpaper texture going on yeah really gorgeous um the only problem with this puzzle though was they actually sent me like an incorrect one so on my instagram i have this one posted and if you go look at that you actually see there's like instead of christmas themed whimsies it came with birds and flowers and i was like that's very pretty but that's not what i was expecting so yeah i was definitely a bit disappointed with that but thankfully i got in contact with their customer service and they fixed the problem for me they free of charge um very kindly sent me this one here which is the new and improved one the one that does actually have beautiful christmas shaped whimsies so um yeah it has little like nutcrackers and i guess presents and snowflakes and things all sorts of christmas things um i did put it together to test it it's fine so yeah that was good that they replaced that i really appreciate it but yeah it was a bit of a weird kind of disappointing at the time because you know i was doing it on christmas day and i was hoping i was like looking forward to the christmas whimsies and then i was like this is not what it's supposed to be so that was a bit disappointing on the day but i am really glad that they were very kind and uh quick to get back to me and and fix the problem with no issues so yeah very happy about that um, but yeah it's a beautiful puzzle and definitely happy to have this in my christmas collection as well i think it's one you could do every year and it's just beautiful and it doesn't take too long to do because it's only a small piece count but yeah it's really lovely and this one actually um so i don't know if it says on here no i can't remember but anyway uh recently wentworth increased the thickness of their pieces um i will try and remember what the thickness this one is but yeah it's definitely like quite a lot thicker than the previous one like this challenge one um and i think they sort of started trying to implement that during this recent batch of christmas puzzles although this one here was new as far as i know but um this still had like the thinner pieces so i don't know why whether it's to do with being a challenge puzzle or not or or they just uh only did it for some i'm yeah i'm not really sure so even though these are very similar piece count, this one is definitely a lot heavier. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, I didn't have anything, any issues with the previous thickness. I thought that was perfectly fine, like a really nice thickness. Um, but yeah, these are even more chunky and nice to handle, I guess. So yeah, it's kind of, yeah. So I'll, I will put the thickness of these and I guess the old one on the screen somewhere. Um, hopefully I'll remember to do that and then our very last uh, puzzle is also from Wentworth and it's very cute and um, tiny teeny weeny and yeah comes in this lovely little Christmas cracker um, and it's called Jingle all the way so as in the drink gin because it is a little there will be a picture up here it's a little bottle of gin a very festive looking Christmas bottle of gin and this one is only 34 pieces so it's like truly a mini puzzle um, but yeah it's really cute it comes in like if you undo this it does come in like a little ah, can I get it out eh. like this ugh. yeah it comes in like a little kind of mesh ribbon gift bag so yeah really cute so I guess you could be super fancy at your Christmas dinner and give each of your guests one of these like a different one or you know put it under the Christmas tree or as a stocking stuffer or you can be like me and give it to yourself as a nice gift um, but yeah it's, it was really cute to put together and I just thought it was just a really fun design and I love the sort of pun in the name um, yeah so let me look at the yeah so it's got like uh, this very festive beautifully patterned bottle with a little gin label and like a little season's greetings gift tag on it and then has this holly kind of coming out behind it um, but the bottle itself is really like beautifully decorated it's like covered in all these like lovely red green pink patterns so yeah really pretty um, this one is not the thick pieces like the new one I guess it's like might even be thinner than the previous ones or the same as the previous ones but I'm not too worried about that because it's just it's a mini puzzle so to me that doesn't really matter um, but yeah really liked it there's no um, whimsies in this one either it's just all like 
little swirly irregular shapes which is fine again because it's such a miniature puzzle but yeah really liked it and um yeah if they have them again this year for christmas i definitely like to pick it up at one or two if there's a, some nice designs that appeal to me so i better go feed my very hungry cat apparently she's starving and i'm a terrible terrible human so i better go uh fix that and uh yeah in a sec we will talk about which was my favorite puzzle and which was my least favorite so the cats have been fed i've redeemed myself i'm now the bestest human ever well at least until they're hungry again anyway um so let's go over which was my least favorite and my favorite um uh, for least favorite i was contemplating uh another puzzle which was actually the wentworth nutcracker just simply because of the sort of mix up with the whimsy shapes but because it was sort of just like an accidental thing and it wasn't really a reflection on the quality or anything like that of the puzzle i kind of thought no i won't pick that one but in the end i end up going with this clementoni uh jolly christmas puzzle let's let's shove that one over there um just simply because uh well one the image is not my favorite like it's fun it's colorful it's festive it was fun to do for christmas but compared to all the other puzzles i did for december uh it they were just so much prettier and more beautiful than this so this is a bit kitsch and garish but yeah it's, it's good fun for Christmas but yeah definitely not like not even really my kind of image that much I think I was more attracted to the fact that it was just a bit bonkers and an impossible puzzle and and just because it was a fun Christmas one but yeah definitely not as pretty as some of the others and then the other issue was a quality issue um, which kind of is a reflection on the brand because I have had this issue some of their other puzzles too was that you know some of the pieces were not cut through to the cardboard properly so I did actually have to get a scalpel and separate a lot of them when I was like taking this apart so it was a bit of a hassle a bit annoying um, so yeah I, that's why this was not my favorite and it was my least favorite um, but by no means do I hate or really dislike this puzzle or anything like that I definitely don't feel that strongly about it it just was the least favorite compared to all the others and then it was definitely a lot more tricky picking my favorite puzzle um that it was very close uh, i mean like again i think like if the wentworth didn't have issues with the whimsy pieces that could have been my favorite i'm not sure um and the tanya wicks ones are so beautiful and i really love them as well but i think this one just won by a very slim margin purely because of the artwork i just really enjoyed it um, so this was the peace house uh, flourish puzzle and yeah i just love the art style sort of bold but also delicate and beautiful but yeah like this graphic style yeah just a really fun mix and just a really interesting image and just yeah just really stunning and that combined with the really excellent quality i mean yes the piece fit was a little bit more on the loose side but i feel like i was just really impressed with the sort of chunky thickness of them and um, how beautifully they went together no false fits and just like that it was quite a matte finish and just the colors and everything so I just yeah really loved it and even the beautiful uh, canvas bag it came in I just thought it had like a lot of really nice qualities about it and you know it really makes me want to do more of the puzzles from this brand which is what you want a puzzle brand to do you want it to make you want to do more of their puzzles so yeah this was the winner um but yeah, definitely a lot of really gorgeous and wonderful quality puzzles this month. So it was was a hard choice. Um, but yeah, really, I think, yeah, I think I'm happy with these decisions. In the comments below, let me know which was your favorite puzzle out of all the puzzles I completed during the month of December. And let me know from your own collection which puzzle you enjoyed piecing together the most during December as well. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.